What we wish to do now is examine what happens to a buffer system when a strong acid is added to it. How does the buffer system resist a change in pH? And when it resists the change in pH, what is the pH after the strong acid has been added to the buffer system? So first of all, what if a small amount, uh, let's say 0 0.10 moles per liter of a strong acid is added to a buffer solution? So here we have a 0 0.10 moles per liter uh, perchloric acid solution. We know that perchloric acid is a strong acid, you put it in water, it completely ionizes into H plus and perchlorate ion. If it's a 0.1 molar solution then of perchloric acid, we know that we have 0.1 molar solution of hydrogen ion and we know that we don't care about the perchlorate ion because it's a conjugate base of a strong acid, so it's a neutral base. Our buffer is made up of sodium acetate and acetic acid. Sodium acetate, 0.2 molar, you put that salt in water, you get sodium cation and acetate ion. We know that the sodium cation is a neutral acid because it's the conjugate acid of a strong base sodium hydroxide and so we just ignore it but we still got that 0.2 molar of acetate. Our acetic acid is a 0.20 molar solution initially we're not going to calculate the hydrogen ion or the acetate ion concentration we know they're very small because the Ka of acetic acid is small and if we have 0.2 molar of the common ion acetate in that solution, that's going to drive the reaction to the left and make the percent ionization even smaller. So what we have is a buffer system. And it's a buffer system that has a 0.2 molar concentration of acetate and a 0.2 molar concentration of acetic acid. So if we add strong acid to the buffer system, what happens? Well, the first reaction is one where we have to remember that acids react with bases. Since we have a 0.1 molar concentration of our acid, it's going to react with the base side of the buffer and it's going to produce a little bit more of the weak acid side. This is a big K reaction, folks. That means it's heavily product favored. It goes all the way. So it's a limiting reactant problem. We have 0 point minus 0 0.10 molar minus 0 0.10 molar. And then we're going to make 0 0.10 molar of our acetic acid. We add our initial and our change line up. And what we get is 0 of our strong acid left. We have 0 0.10 molar of our acetate ion left and we have 0 0.30 molar of our acetic acid left. So in this first reaction, it's a big K reaction. Our table is not ICE, it's ICF in that first step. That's the step where the buffer absorbs the strong acid or alternatively uh, absorbs the strong base. In the second step, that's where the reaction gets back to equilibrium because if you look at the first reaction what's happened you had a buffer that was at equilibrium the addition of the strong acid made more product in the sense of acetic acid than was originally present at equilibrium and it has to flow back toward equilibrium so now we're going to calculate the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen ion, acetic acid, and acetate ion, and we're also going to calculate the pH of the solution. So from the first table, we get the values that we'll use in the second calculation. For acetic acid, we have 0 0.30 molar. We don't have any hydrogen ion to start with, and we have 0 0.1 zero molar of the acetate left. Because we don't have any hydrogen ion to start with, our reaction has to flow in the direction of the hydrogen ion, which is going to be minus x. And for the product side, plus x, plus x, 
and then finally adding the equilibrium, uh, uh, sorry, the initial concentration and the change uh, of x's, we wind up with 0 0.30 plus x and x and 0 0.10 plus x for the acetate ion. We go ahead and we construct our Ka expression. Our Ka expression is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the acetate C2H3O2 concentration divided by our acetic acid concentration HC2H3 3, O2. Oops, O2. And that is H3. Okay, so now I'm going to just plug in my values. The Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And I'm going to look at that 10 to the minus 5 versus 10 to the minus 1 and 3 times 10 to the minus 1 here. That tells me that this x is small relative to my initial concentration as is this x small relative to my initial concentration. So I can ignore both of those and that just gives me for my concentration of products x times 0 0.10 divided by 0.30. I'll go ahead and solve that problem for x, which gives me x, which is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration after the addition of the strong acid, which is going to equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times the denominator 0 0.30 divided by the point 0.1 from the numerator. And when I do that, I wind up with a concentration of 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5 molar in hydrogen ion. I can take the negative log of that to get the pH, and when I take the negative log of 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5, I get a pH of 4.27. And that would be our pH after the addition of strong acid to our buffer system. Now, keep in mind, since our buffer system had an equal concentration originally of acetate ion and acetic acid, our original pH was our pH was equal to 4.74. And what we can see is, even with the addition of half as much uh, strong acid as we did acetate or acetic acid in our buffer system, the pH of our buffer only dropped to 4.27. It would have gone much, much lower if it were not for the presence of the buffer system. If we had dropped the strong acid into pure water, it would have gone far lower. I'm going to show you one other uh, substitute for the ice table, which should come in handy for you. And that is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. That is equal to the pH. The pH is equal to the pKa. And what is the pKa? The pKa is simply the negative log of the Ka plus the log of the weak base concentration divided by the weak acid concentration. This is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So if I use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate my pH, I get pH is equal to the negative log of the Ka. The Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. If I take the negative log of that, and you can check this out, I get 4.74. And then plus the log 
of my resultant weak base concentration divided by my weak acid concentration. So that's going to be 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.30. And I will get exactly the same pH 4.27 using the Henderson Hasselbach equation. I invite you to use it anytime you want to calculate the pH of a buffer, but only when you have a buffer system can you use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation.